plugin of the week is the Brainworks Vertigo VSC-2. The uh, Brainworks VSC-2 uh, plugin is a quad discrete VCA compressor. This is actually an emulation of a, an actual physical hardware piece of gear. Uh, that's a real high-end piece of gear found in many mastering facilities and uh, mix facilities. Uh, VCA compressors um, and the ones that this is basically built from center around a lot of the uh, VCA design work, which is really primarily done in the 70s and 80s. And you'll see some similarities with some of the settings to classic um, VCA compressors. And I'll kind of point those out as we go along. Although it, it is not designed to emulate those specifically, it has a very unique sound uh, and characteristic to it. And so let's kind of go through some of the basic um, setup of it here, and then we can talk about uh, some of the other uh, unique features that are involved. Uh, at the very left, we have a threshold knob, and that's pretty straightforward. You just have a, a threshold adjustment, and so that that's the point where gain reduction is triggered. Um, there's a ratio control. The ratio control has um, uh, six settings. Um, the normal ratio, 2 to 1, 4 to 1, 8 to 1, and 10 to 1. And then you have a unique setting, which is a soft setting. Now, the soft setting is unique in that it is a graduated... Um, uh, ratio. So somewhat similar to a knee, but not exactly because um, with a knee control, you're only controlling the ratio characteristic as it's passing across the, the threshold. And what this soft compression um, or this soft setting does is like what they call like a tiptoe feature. And in other words, the more gain reduction you have, the more it increases the actual ratio. So it will range from one to one up to eight to one. So depending upon the amount of gain reduction you're getting, as the signal goes farther above threshold, it will increase the ratio accordingly. And this is meant to emulate somewhat of the characteristic sound of optical components and the way that they go about uh, processing and creating gain reduction for audio signals. So some of the classic ones are the LA-2A and the LA-3A, or classic optical compressors. So uh, it's not... Uh, mimicking or trying to be an optical compressor. It is a VCA compressor, but that is sort of the similar characteristic that you can get. There's also a, um, a brick setting, um, and the brick setting is not a pure brick uh, peak limiter. It's an analog one because it's still working with the attack and release setting, so you're not going to get sample level gain reduction. So this is not a setting that you would use at the very last stage of your mastering um, you know, to get to maximize your output level. That's not the effect that you're going to get. You want to go to a, a true, um, you know, peak output processor for maximizing the output gain. But this will give you an analog style limiting stage with a brick wall setting. Many of the uh, early components um, that uh, were designed as bus compressors, going back to like the Fairchild compressors, were peak limiters. That's you know the um, the basic uh, purpose for them, and many of them for like broadcast use. The Neve uh, 2254, similar kind of thing. Now you have attack settings, which go from 0.1 milliseconds up to 30 uh, milliseconds. So you have a range of attack times, which is really great. Um, the um, release times go from 100 milliseconds, uh, which is a fast setting, up to an auto setting. So you have a 1.2 second, which is a slow release, and we'll go over some different uh, characteristic setups and settings, and then you also have an auto release. The auto release is really great when you have program material that varies uh, maybe somewhat dramatically or a little more dramatically between uh, soft and uh, more sustaining material and then more aggressive and transient material. So you may have a, a nice setting for the transient section, but when you get to the softer, slower section with more sustain, the compression settings don't quite work the same. So what this will do is it'll adapt the release characteristic to compensate for um, the signal as it passes through. So it's kind of monitoring the sort of attack um, decay uh, characteristics of the sound. Now, um, what we have here is a makeup gain, which is, you know, obvious. So the compressor settings, there's nothing unusual about them. Threshold, ratio, attack, release, makeup, all pretty straightforward. You can bypass um, the individual settings because there is a characteristic sound um, of passing the signal through without the compression and still going through the BCA. And this does create some harmonic distortion characteristic um, that may be subtle or maybe more obvious based on the program material that you're feeding into it. But this would allow you to basically bypass the compressor but still use that harmonic distortion characteristic as part of the um, signal chain. Um, now, you can operate it in stereo or mono. Uh, and this is kind of cool because in, in what's unique about this setup 
um, with the quad discrete um, VCAs is that um, when you are running a signal in stereo, the left and right sides generally for a lot of stereo compressors are merged together and those feed the actual side chain which triggers the gain reduction and so therefore they operate in exactly the same way all the time. Um, now the way that this works is it keeps the left side chain trigger and the right side chain trigger discrete but the effect happens on both sides and so with this if you have a signal that is suddenly maybe louder a little bit on the left than on the right hand side it will apply gain reduction to both so it doesn't sound uneven or doesn't skew the imaging but um but it allows it to be more accurate in terms of the way that it responds to it whereas a combined audio signal will not give you the accuracy and i think that's really a very key component about the design of this particular a uh, compressor that makes it so really cool and very applicable for mastering and, and uh, mix bus purposes. Um, you also have um, a mono setting. What this does is it makes them completely independent or discrete from each other. So because of the design of the sign shade characteristic, it's easy to separate the left and the right side from each other and have them operate completely independent of each other. Now, um, there's also a sidechain filter. So when the audio signal comes in, this is a feed-forward style compressor, which means that it responds to the incoming signal um, as opposed to a feedback style compressor, which is more of the style of the older um, vintage VCA compressors, which take the output of the actual amplification stage, which applies the gain reduction, and feeds it back in uh, to the circuit um, because it's, it ends up not being as responsive uh, to the audio signal in that. But it, in that day and in that time, it was more appropriate to the way that the sound that people were looking for, a little bit warmer overall. A lot of peak transient signal was cut down by analog tape machines and other analog components that things were running through. And uh, later on, as we got into digital, the, pres the more... Um, uh, well-preserved transient peaks now need a bit more attention because there are not stages prior to this which are, are necessarily controlling them as much. So the feed-forward style compressor here ends up serving a little bit better in terms of managing and more accurately working with the peak uh, transient characteristics. So that's kind of cool. So there's when the signal comes in, it's actually split, and then you have the option of putting it through a filter, 60 hertz filter or a 90 hertz filter. And all this does when you're working with it is that if you have um, low-end program material that's perhaps over-triggering your compression or not making the compressor operate as responsive or get it, getting it to be as responsive as you would like by filtering off those low frequencies from the sidechain signal, not the actual audio path signal, then you can get the compressor to actually operate um, a bit more accurately and, and uh, be more responsive to the audio signal and not eat up some of, too much of the low end. So let's have a listen um, and go through it because I think I've gone through all of the basic parameters here. So let's start by uh, setting, uh, I'm going to set up like a simple thing. This is like a classic setting that I would do like on an SSL bus compressor, uh, which would be, uh, it's like a subtle pump and breathe kind of compression, like four to one ratio. Uh, very slow attack to allow the transient signal to pop through, fast release, um, and then we'll have a little bit of makeup gain uh, based on, we'll just have a couple dB of gain reduction, but let's kind of start with this. This is like... So this does exactly what that style compressor would do, but it, it in a way it's it sounds very different than the SSL bus compressor, and in also in a very good way. You like you can hear when you bring this in, like the way that it opens up the sound. Um, which is kind of part of this style of compression on a mix bus. This idea is that you basically, you want, 
it to be just a little bit punchier and then you want the compression to kind of pump the track a little bit which helps to kind of accentuate the rhythmic element of it and that kind of opens things up. So that's one um, quick approach that we can use. So let's try another one that is um, using a softer technique, but I'm gonna kind of work with a, a faster attack setting. So this is gonna be a little bit more uh, responsive to how much gain pushes above the threshold. And then I'm gonna go with a lower, uh, um, uh, longer release time here. And uh, let's just kind of see, uh, see what's kind of setting. So I'm just gonna more or less kind of guess uh, some basic settings here and let's have a listen and I'll make some adjustments as we kind of go along here. There's music in your voice. So what here might have been to enter into the put the so filter into the side chain here. So now in this, I'm doing a more moderate amount of game reduction. As you can see, I'm closer in, in the 4 dB of game reduction um, and with a lower threshold and with the ratio. So the cool part about this is that it's not shutting down the whole thing. It's actually, it's a little bit softer as it goes lower and, and kind of a little more controlling as you kind of hit it harder. And that has a certain um, characteristic sound that actually smooths out the overall thing, makes it sound a little bit more finished. And with the slower release time has more or less a smoothing characteristic, but you can still hear the openness that's brought in. Now, uh, the first thing I heard was that the low end was kind of over pumping the compressor. And when I switched that out, the sound is completely opened up. So if I just kind of quickly show you that here, you can hear it right away. So you can hear the way that the kick drum in particular is over pumping the compression. There's music in your voice A song so soft and sweet that I had no So that's a real key uh, component to, to kind of making this work. So that's another setting. I'm going to show you one other one here, which is with a really fast attack and even longer release. And this is kind of like a way of kind of smoothing out um, the the sound here. So I'm going to use this and uh, let's just kind of... Usually with this kind of thing, I'll, I'll kind of start off with a um, let's let's kind of go in and check out the brick setting and and kind of work with it more from a peak limiter perspective. So this is with the long release and the fast attack is kind of approaching a little bit more of a, a vintage style kind of peak program limiter. And let's kind of see what we can get from here. Also have a bit of extra gain here, so I'm not going to back that off a little bit. music in your voice A song so soft and sweet that I had no choice My love I'm praying for a whisper in my ear Just a sound to make it clear So I'm sitting here waiting by the phone Talk to me <laughs> So obviously that Tom Phil hits it a little bit hard there Just for you, and I know you love me too. 
Okay, so like at the threshold a little bit too low. Uh, so this Tom filter kind of pushing it a little bit too much. Uh, but here in this kind of characteristic and this kind of setup, we're kind of creating a little bit of more overall warmth and and smoothness. So there's a, like one is kind of like a, a kind of more or less pump and breathe kind of thing. One is sort of like a, a medium sustain kind of thing. This is more of a little bit more of an overall smoothness. And each one has its own openness in in all of those different settings whichever one you use you can hear how it's giving like a characteristic um like openness to the sound so there's something in just running through the basic components there that creates an openness and a depth that uh is really powerful so this is really really an amazing um um uh, vca uh compressor in terms of just the the sonic purity the warmth the openness um, the air, the body that it adds in, it's really, really amazing. Uh, like as a high quality, uh, super high quality mix bus compressor or mastering compressor and, uh, and definitely a really good one to have um, in your arsenal of, of bus processing plugins. So there you have it. Um, the um, Brainworks Vertigo uh, VSC-2 uh, compressor.